everyone welcome back uh so this episode was really should have been two episodes that i've created on order management i'm quickly gonna go over the functionality that i have uh, created but unfortunately after recording the videos i have forgot to edit them and then later on deleted them so the two episodes are missing and i am terribly sorry about this hopefully uh, the quality of the tutorial hasn't suffered too much because of this but to be honest, in those two tutorials, I don't explain anything new that I haven't already explained in the other tutorials. It's just building on uh, the knowledge that we already uh, basically have used across the apl application and uh, just doing uh, repetitive tasks to uh, basically ingrain the knowledge of, dot of writing .NET Core and C Sharp into our fingers. All right. So let's quickly step over what uh, functionality I have missed out in the tutorial. So after placing an order in this order management tab of the admin panel, I have my orders here, which is uh, the order reference and the, the email of the person placing the order. We then click on an order. It just basically takes you to this order, which you can process and you can exit. All right, so very simple, nothing too crazy that I'm doing here. And I have three stages. So first, when the order is placed, uh, it's pending, right? So I usually you know how in Amazon your order is placed, shipped, you can track the parcel. Obviously, I don't have the infrastructure to track the parcel, so I simulate kind of this process of uh, uh, your order lifetime through pending, packed, and shipped, right? So I'm basically letting my customers know uh, that your order is pending. And uh, once I have packed the order, so I've got all the items, I put them all uh, in a box, I wrap them up, I put the little bow tie on top, I wrote my card to say thank you for purchasing from my shop. I put it on that box and it's all nice and neat. And it's packed and it's ready to be shipped, right? So the customer can have that extra feedback to basically know, all right, my order's packed, it should be shipped next day, right? So next day when I go to the post office, I put the package in the post office and I ship it off. I then come back here, I go to packed, I press on the order, I process it to ship, all right? So, so let's imagine that I have now packed this order. I might uh, go as far as uh, displaying some more information in this div here. This is where I'm displaying the, the order information. So again, just the order reference and the email. Uh, I have the full object uh, in the selected order. So I have all the items, etc. I'm just I haven't gone as far as displaying them. This is something that you can easily implement. And press the process button. All right, and that takes you back here. And uh, now the order will appear in the packed. Uh, area and and there I can process it again and it will move it to the shipped status okay so let's take a look at the functionality uh, so from ground up uh, in the domain in my models order I have order status so then there is also a anonymous folder that I created and usually this is how I manage my uh, entities and enums. So I have an enums folder and models. I sometimes call this folder entities depending on how I feel that day. And if I have too many entities ever appearing here, I will sort them in their respective folders. So usually the entities that depend on each other go into one folder and uh, the entities that don't depend on those uh, on the entities in that folder go in a different folder, right? And I try to sort them that way. But Essentially, I have this order status, which I uh, advance from pan pending to packed to shipped. Okay, so I have that, and I give this property, I give this enum this property of order status, right, where I can advance this um, order. Okay, next thing is I have this order management page. Again, I, it's just a simple uh, view app with a view. So at the top here, I have uh, my tabs. These are these pending, packed and shipped. And the list of orders at the bottom that I've displayed 
um, based on the currently selected orders, right? So here you can see that I'm watching for status change, which is essentially this button here. So pending, packed, and shipped uh, changes the status on click. And I'm just binding the class active uh, to change the color of this. So this is a Bulma component, and you can easily implement this by just basically copy pasting this code. All right, uh, and then basically, I have uh, the selected order here, so all you have to do is click on this link here to pass in the order ID to this function, select order, and then this function goes off and fetch, fetches the order and assigns the order uh, to the selected order, and then the selected order is um, displayed here, and then all I have is this button, display some information, and process, right? So exit order and update order uh, exit order i just uh, set the selected order to null you don't really need this as a function you can literally put uh, the statement in uh, uh, the on click event here and update order i all i'm doing is i'm uh, calling a put http method so i'm updating i'm calling put uh, to this orders controller, right? And this orders controller, all it has is three functions, get orders, uh, get order, and update orders. So get order based on status, it will get the orders. So let's take a look inside the get orders uh, function. So here you can see I'm passing in the status to this function, and I'm looking at where order status. So I'm converting this into order status. And, I'm, and then I'm selecting this response. Uh, if I want to uh, include more information, I, but I get the full order based on the ID later on. So this is the basically the minima that I want to get, and then I convert it to list, and I return this response. Uh, next thing I have up is the get order. So just based on ID, I get all the information. But as you've seen, I only display order reference and the email okay and uh, i have a list of products in here again i have another class that uh, represents the products and i have this query where based on id i include the order stock and then i include the stock and the product and i just fill out this information based on what i have selected okay and i just select the first or default product um and then update order so uh, this is where i advance the status so because uh, um, literally status is an integer i all i can do is just add one to it and i'm basically pushing the uh, what's called the the status forward you can do if depending on how complicated your system gets you probably want to create different methods for updating to different status if you ever want to roll back or jump statuses or skip statuses depending on what kind of delivery methods you provide i i am aware that uh, basically if i reorder these uh, this function is going to break but it's a simple enough model for this scenario okay so just keep in mind if you are going to have a more complicated uh Scenario, this method will probably have to be a little bit more complicated. You probably need one more than one service, okay? Uh, so that pretty that's pretty much covers on what I missed out in the other uh, videos. So literally, I, I either get all the orders, I get the specific order to get as much information as possible, and I update the order, okay? So another thing I wanted to show in this uh, video is let me close all of these, close all documents. I wanted to show how we can go about uh, using dependency injection to make our program a little bit more slick and a little bit more um, testable and basically leverage the dependency injection that uh, .NET Core provides us. And the fact that that dot net core is built on this whole dependency injection layer all right so let's create a new file in our application layer and let's call this 
service register dot cs okay so first thing we're gonna change the namespace to being microsoft extensions dependency injection okay uh, next thing i am going to change this to a static class and the next thing i want to do is create a public static i service collection okay and i want to do i want to call it add application services okay and this is going to be an extension method so i'm going to call this i service collection and uh, let's do at this and at the end i want to return at this okay and the way we would want to do this is let's go in our to our startup and let's take a look at this one service that i did register with dependency injection so you see how we do this here what we can do is we can take add this add transient and let's copy this service paste it here just so i can copy the name put it here and let's import it and now let me get rid of this line okay and now what i want to do is i want to take services and i want to add application services just like so okay and this is going to register all uh, these services into my dependency injection layer and, um, and that's uh, what's going to allow me to do something that i'm going to describe next all right so let's go ahead and uh, do this for every single one of our services uh, this might take uh, a little bit of time but uh, you know it's it, this will uh, give us a little bit of leverage leverage so actually i'm not going to do this for every service i'm going to do this just for the order service all right i'm going to show you how you can uh, use this all right so let me close these ones so i don't consume too much time and let's do get order uh get orders and let's do update order okay so we have a namespace issue here so i didn't want to you'll probably need to do some renaming here if you want to register all the services but i'll leave that up to you to figure it out uh so let me get rid of the cart and there we go okay so here you have registered these services what now so let's go into this controller and open up this orders controller and here are the services that we are using all right so what we can do is we can either inject into the constructor or we can inject into the function itself so uh, we are using one service per function all right so we don't want to inject a service into the constructor because it's only going to be used with one function rather we want to inject the service straight into the function all right so the way we accomplish this is we use a from services tag and we take get orders and create a get orders variable all right so the dependency injection uh, is a dependency injection is going to automatically inject uh, an instance of uh, this class and automatically supply application db context to it right so we will no longer need an instance of this here we can just take get orders and call do here all right and we do the same with the rest of our methods from services to get order get order place this and do the same here from services update order update order okay uh let's clean this up a bit let's put this on a new line like so uh, let's remove this here 
And a good idea would be if you have an async method, instead of calling do, let's let's call this do async. All right. Okay, so this is what our orders controller will look like now. So let's let me go ahead and launch this again. Let me go to the admin panel and let me double check that everything still works. So let me grab this order and let me process it. Okay, cool. So it's all working and uh, let me close this. So this is essentially the way that you want to basically uh, follow the process of uh, using your dependency injection and uh, not having to create these uh, classes by yourself, uh, not letting these methods create them, but rather leveraging the dependency injection container that the shop has and uh, doing it this way. Okay, so general um, way you create a add service. If you have a lot of services, again, you split them up into folders. You might abstract them uh, using uh, other design patterns, but essentially this is the way that you want to approach this and you want to add these services. So perhaps you can have a something like a repository pattern applied to the orders and have uh, each individual method call an individual service that way. Okay, but that is a little bit complicated to do, so I'm not going to go into that. But uh, generally, again, a good rule of thumb is keeping things simple. So just put all your services here. You have just a single line registering all your services. Uh, if need be, you can create a, like an order service register, a stock service register, and then in here you would call this dot add order service register, stock service register, and uh, then just uh, just in your startup you are still calling only add application services. Okay, and uh, uh, the same thing would go for your uh, razor pages. Instead of injecting the application uh, DB context in your constructor, you would do from services uh, get card, get card, and then you would replace this whole thing with get card dot do. Okay. Uh, however, covering this HTTP context, you will need to add that to dependency injection as well. Uh, but yeah, hope, uh, hopefully I have uh, managed to introduce something new here. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you think I missed anything out, I will make uh, any additional uh, episodes to the these series uh, upon request. So if you guys think uh, there is something cool that you'd like to learn or you'd like me to show you, uh, leave a comment. Uh, again, any questions, leave a comment. If you enjoyed these series, like, subscribe. And as always, see you in my other videos.